Hello everyone, welcome back to Team Nutrilix. I'm your host, Coslix. Today, I'm telling you 17 pro tips to improve a Brahala instantly. If you watch this video, I promise you're going to improve. And if you want to improve even more, consider checking out TeamNutrilix.com. If you want to improve a Brahala as quick as possible, I'd really recommend subscribing to Team Nutrilix's Brahala class. For only $4.99 a month, you get access to a private class hosted by Nutrilix pros, creators, and coaches through our Discord. You also gain access to all previous lectures if you just go to our website under the Members tab. A big problem with improving at video games through YouTube videos is that YouTube really rewards a certain kind of video, where this membership allows us to host classes on any topic and really tell you guys the real stuff to improve at Brahala. For more information on our Brahala class, go to teammutualix.com or just click the link down below. Guarantee you are going to learn something by watching this video unless you're already a pro at Brahala. If you watch this video and you didn't learn a single thing, let me know down below and maybe I'll give you another comment to help with a tip until we find something you don't know. So yeah, subscribe to Team Mutualix, check out the website. Let's get right into this video. That's a lot of yapping. Uh, the first tip we're talking about, if you go into Brahala, we're gonna go to the settings. So that's gonna be in the top right. Uh, just go to options. We're gonna go to preferences and then we're gonna look at the camera mode. And you see my camera mode is on action. I usually go default, but I'd really recommend going action or going close camera. And the reason for this is because it's a lot closer. So the little micro adjustments to your spacing is gonna be a lot easier. So for instance, if I hop into a match, I'm gonna show you the difference really quick. It is a dramatic difference. And all the best players use these camera options. Guys like Stingray, uh, I don't know what Sandstorm uses, but almost all the new players and Brazilians even, they almost all use this, uh, I promise. You can ask anyone, the majority use these options. So if you go to default, you can kind of see what default looks like. You know, zooms in, pretty zoomed in, but not too much. Uh, let's go to now action and take a look at this difference. It's gonna keep zooming in. And this way you have a lot more precision on the micro adjustments. You can see what hits and what doesn't hit a lot clearer. And there's one other option, which is the close option. For me, this is a little too close. It is super close. It really changes the game and kind of shows you that they need to improve the resolution on these legends. It looks pretty bad. Um, but yeah, this is the best way that Stingray and a lot of other top players use. So definitely recommend switching to either action or close. And let's get to the second tip. So the next tip, which you can kind of already see in the game right now, is these damage icons. You can see my opponent is yellow and I'm white. And this is a great way to see the health without landing a hit and also without checking the stocks in the top right. Um, one other little fun fact, if you don't want this option, whenever you land an attack, it actually flashes the color of their health. So that's something to note. Uh, if you don't want this option, you can still see the health, but it relies on you hitting your opponent. And it's hard to register what health they're at, where it's easier if it's before you, uh, you hit them. So I really recommend to turn this on. What you're going to want to do is go back to those settings. Uh, go back to preferences, go to team icons, throw that on damage and the name slash icon size, throw it on big icons. That way it's a lot easier to see what health your opponent's at and uh, makes your life much easier. So the third tip, and this is something a lot of you have heard before, but I want to reinforce it, is to pick a main. Every weapon and every legend in Brawlhalla plays slightly differently. And most importantly, if you stick to one thing, there's less things you need to improve at in order to go pro or at least to see a difference in rank. So if you focus on one thing at a time, you're limiting your scope. You're making it as easy as possible to see a noticeable difference in your gameplay and it will help you climb the ranks even easier. So pick a main and honestly, even pick a main weapon. I like Lance. Whichever weapon you have the most fun playing, I really recommend focus on one thing at a time and you'll see a lot of results and then you can focus on the other things. So pick a main, pick a main weapon. Let's go to tip number four. Okay, so tip number four, let's talk about flow charts and what a flow chart is. So essentially, if we go into training and I'm just gonna turn this stuff on, I'm gonna reset the bot's position. A flow chart is deciding what to do depending on the circumstance once you land a punish. So let's say I land this axe side light. Because I hit the axe side light slightly stacked, you can ask yourself, which follow-up do I go for? And because you hit it stacked like this, it's better to go for a down light. That is the true confirmed combo where that nair doesn't always hit if you hit it close to stacked, as you can see. So understanding which move you should go for, depending on the circumstance, 
it's gonna optimize your brahala gameplay so that way you don't need to win neutral as much in order to win it's picking the options it's finding the solution to brahala on the weapon you play so on axe side light down light if you hit it stacked or maybe even if you want even more reward you could experiment with side light down there and that's another way because side light downer sets you up for three pieces in a really good position with ground pound, but it's less consistent. So maybe you'll want to down light. So understanding what's the most optimal thing to go for in every circumstance is very, very important. Same with side light nair. If you nair in there in white, maybe you can grab the cancel down light, right? I'm misinputting. I switched to the D pad literally today. So <laughs> ignore me for the misinputs. It's just so it's easier on my wrist. Um, I usually play analog, but yeah, maybe you want a side light down light. But let's say their health is, I don't know, 120 and you side light there. Oh no, that down light, it's 12 frames. That's not going to hit. So when you hit them at this health, maybe in your flow chart, you jump recovery and that way you're going to get a kill. Or maybe you jump there, right? So the point is, it's adapting your follow up depending on the circumstance. So really optimize and find the solution to your combos in Brahala, and that is your flow chart. And uh, figure out what's optimal in every situation, and you're gonna win 10 times easier Brahala. Now, tip number five is to position yourself depending on the strengths of your weapon. So for instance, Axe's combo starter is side light. So if I'm grounded, I'm gonna wanna be a bit more horizontal and grounded. That way I can also go for Axe neutral light, but really wanna space yourself horizontally because that way you're gonna do the most amount of damage. However, on Lance, it's also horizontal because side light is so horizontal, end light's horizontal, Sarah's horizontal. There's not many stacked options other than down light and even that move is pretty slow. So you're gonna wanna be a bit more horizontal, but this isn't true for every legend. So for instance, on hammer, uh, I guess side light's a good horizontal option, but it's not really a horizontal combo starter. So if you can be stacked and grounded, down light is your best play. So being comfortable being near your opponent and catching those stack situations is very important. Same with Orb. Orb doesn't have a ton of horizontal range. You can dash side light, which is obviously a really great option. Um, but if you're closer, the side light might be a little bit easier to land. And you also have really good coverage. Neutral light stacked, down light at diagonal, side light horizontal. Just really well-rounded so you could be a little closer to your opponent than let's say on Lance or Axe. Um, I'll do one more example, uh, Thea. Thea's boots in general, boots down light is super close to the user. So on boots, you're gonna wanna be closer, but still a little horizontal so you can land that down light. But you can't be back here or that dash down light might not land if you're too far away. But if you're on Lance, for instance, uh, check this out, it will land. So your positioning is different depending on the weapon. So position yourself in a way where you're gonna get the most amount of reward. For whatever thing you play and even more true if you play something like scythe or gauntlets maybe you'll want to be a bit more off stage for gauntlets or blasters really everything in the game like scythe you know horizontal you don't even have true combos grounded so maybe you'll want to be a bit more diagonal and then you can start with that there right who knows it's up to you just position yourself in whatever places work best for your weapon so Doing all these things would probably get you diamond at this point, and if not, continue watching this video. But if you are diamond, I highly recommend to enter every single tournament you can possibly find. And here's how to find the tournaments that are at least officially sponsored by Brahala or partnered they're made from Brahala. Uh, in the main menu, you're going to want to go to this little icon on the right, tournaments on youtube.com slash pro Brahala. Um, this is a menu to click on, fun fact. If you didn't know, it's because Brahala's UI is terrible. Go tell them that, no offense Brahala, but this is terrible. Tell people this is a menu. When you click on this menu, it takes you to the eSports hub. I know, secret menu, crazy, right? They still haven't updated the Twitter logo. <laughs> but anyways, they haven't updated a lot of stuff on this menu, except for the tournaments, and this is what's important. Uh, you can go to official tournaments. You can see all the next official tournaments. There's one happening in literally 12 days from when I'm recording this on August 13th. So go sign up for that. Uh, there's also more tournaments. So this is the Lofty or whatever, Lofty. The next one, Freya, is in September. So tons of tournaments coming up. And then you can go to community tournaments. And there's tons of community tournaments literally this coming weekend or the weekend after that and the weekend after that. Um, and then it looks like there's a LAN on this date for 2v2. This one says it's in PA. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, they got 1v1 and 2v2. That's really cool. I'm going to have to go to that. Um, but yeah, Frostbite, 
uh, Logitech tournaments already happened, but look, there's a Neutralix land, and that's a tournament I'm hosting in Toronto for 250, so go check that out. It's going to be the fall showdown. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great community tournaments, so check out this menu. Sign up to any tournament you can possibly find if you hit Diamond. If you're below Diamond, I wouldn't recommend this tip quite yet. Let's get to the next tip. So tip number seven, join a clan. So I've made a clan myself. I don't really use clans if I'm being quite honest, but uh, I made this back in 2017. But 2017 is when I was going pro pro holo for the first time. And back then, it really helps when you join a community that plays the game, giving you an excuse, surrounding yourself in an in an environment that is playing Brawlhalla daily will make you want to play the game more. It, the truth is you're a product of your own environment. So join a clan and pick an environment for you to be friends with and meet some new people. And they're going to help you improve at Brawlhalla even without telling you to improve at Brawlhalla. It's just going to happen organically. So go find some Brawlhalla clans. If someone's in a clan that you want to do on and the clan looks cool, maybe invite them to a lobby and try and join their clan. Get into the community a little bit because that way you're going to improve without even thinking. So tip number eight, and a lot of people who are watching this won't like this tip, but it's the truth. Play Brawlhalla on PC. You get a lot more options. You can buy higher refresh rate monitors that reduce input lag. Uh, it's just the best way to play Brawlhalla. So if you are, I'd say at least diamond and you want to take this game seriously, I really recommend investing into a computer and don't even buy a computer just to play Brawlhalla. Buy a computer because it's a long-term investment. You can make content, you can stream, you can make graphics and sell them. You can do video editing and be paid to do it on YouTube. Uh, the point is, it's an investment in yourself to make more money that will pay back the computer. A computer is not for fun, although it's an excuse to also have fun. So buy a computer if you don't have one already. I highly recommend it. And once you buy a computer, optimize your game. That's tip number nine. Brahalla has a lot of optimization tricks and tips. So go check out our video last year on how to remove any lag in Brahalla. We're going to be doing an updated version of this fairly soon. So say subscribe to Team Neutralix, turn the notifications on if you want to improve our multiverses and Brahalla and future fighting games too. But if you want to improve your game's performance and check out our previous video the link to that is down below it's also on screen right now editor show a screenshot you know go check out that video to remove any input lag in brahala so we're not just improving brahala's input lag let's improve your ranked experience let's make it so ranked is much easier to win every single time so what you're going to want to do is go to ranked 1v1 or 2v2 and then we're pressing the ranked settings if you go to the ranked settings you'll see i have a lot of custom options tournament maps only and make sure that is on that is the most important thing in the world next ban the maps that you don't like i really don't like western air temple i also don't like mishima Do dojo they're like old enigma but worse kind of and i don't like air temple at all so ban those and last but not least ban gadgets make sure that's on why are you playing with gadgets on they're not competitive they're random just don't why would they ever be off? It's like, yeah, just ban gadgets on. Make sure this is on and you're going to have a much less frustrating ranked experience. So tip number 11, we're actually going to play a game to help explain this tip. I'm going to play random. And this tip is to help you improve at neutral every single time. And to do that, there's just num one massive tip that will just get anyone who is basically below diamond in diamond immediately. And that tip is to make sure your opponent is vulnerable. Your attack accuracy is extremely important. Missing will give your opponent an opportunity to hit you. So really focus on raising your accuracy. And how do you raise your accuracy? You ensure an attack is going to land. So make sure your opponent is vulnerable if you're trying to hit them for real. So for instance, you know, he's gonna do something and then I went for the side light, but he missed that. When they miss, it's an opportunity to hit them. Just make sure you're making an accurate decision. I couldn't hit them there, but he's going to miss and I could hit him there. And then I hit him with a little true combo. Got a little punish. He dodged, so he was vulnerable. I missed that side light. No dodge, so he's vulnerable. So I went for the three piece, right? Make sure your opponent can't avoid your attacks. Make sure they are vulnerable. I missed that. And you've got no option. So yeah, ensure your opponent vulnerable. I want you guys who are, if you're below diamond, really watch what's happening right here. Focus every single time I hit him. It's to like when they're vulnerable. I almost just hear the death of them with a triple nair. That's really funny. But you know, if they don't have a dodge, maybe they're vulnerable. 
He dared. He was vulnerable. He recovered. I almost went. I went for him. I shouldn't have went for that Sarah. He wasn't vulnerable. What does he do? Put him. He, he missed, right? Focus on them missing. Or if they got no dodge, then they're vulnerable because they can't dodge your attack. So, you know, he's going to waste a dodge and then I hit him. He's going to waste a recovery and then I miss him. <laughs> That's on me though. I just missed him. It's not because I didn't do it. He missed a down stick, then I hit him. All right? He's going to dodge, then I hit him. He's going to dodge again, then I hit him. Right? It's waiting for that moment to be accurate. Ensure your attack is going to land. You're going to win every single game by just doing that. Okay, let's 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 win this game, chat. If this video is helping you, by the way, please subscribe to Neutralix. This channel, again, is made to help you improve. Also, that side's a kit because he was vulnerable. You know, make your opponent miss and you're not going to miss. Okay, tip number 12 that's going to actually help with the last tip is we're going to do a little training routine. And people who've been watching, watching my videos for a while kind of know what I'm about to talk about. But I still want to reiterate it for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, go to offline. Set the players to two. Let's go ranked 1v1 maps. Let's turn the gadgets off. Um, and let's put the bot. We'll start with hard, right? And last but not least, my bad, put the lives to one. And then pick your main or whatever character and start a match. Or, well, we could change the lobby settings. I personally like to just put it random. That way it's even quicker. But yeah, start a match and it gets right into it. Now, we're going to play a little game, okay? The game is to beat your opponent without getting hit once so Three, two, ensure that one, everything four. you do will not make you vulnerable focus on the accuracy you know and just don't get hit once if you get hit once i'll show you what to do i got hit once so then you pause it you leave and then you start it back up again and it's instant it's a really quick way to focus on accuracy and that is a big thing when improving Three, upper holla if you do this one as a little training routine, you know, let's say you're at school and you have a laptop and maybe your school blocks your Steam servers and you just want to practice Brahalla. This is a way to practice it without taking it too seriously. And fun fact, I used to do this in high school. When I was in high school, I'd bring a little MacBook Air to school and I would load up training room and I would do this and I just one do on the bots. And then once you beat the bot in one of the game modes, like let's say the bot is hard, we upgrade them to extreme and then try and do the same thing. And I guarantee you, 99% of the people watching this right now, you guys cannot beat a chosen bot without getting hit once. So doing this is just insane practice because it tells you what you need to do to get better at Brawlhalla. It's the same thing. Focus on your attack accuracy. These bots will miss, unless they don't. But they will miss. So really focus on getting them to miss or making sure they're vulnerable when you hit them. If they're also standing still, they're pretty vulnerable. So keep that in mind as well. Three, Do whatever two, it takes one, to be as accurate as possible. But you don't want to play too scared. It's a balance between accuracy and not. Like that was a terrible Sarah for me and I ate a ground pound for it. So you can kind of see every time you get hit, there's a mistake. And so this is a great training routine to isolate the problem and focus on a, an accurate solution. So yeah, let's go to the, the next step. I cannot talk now. I'm yapping so much. Let's go to the next tip. So tip number 13 is pretty similar to this one. It's another training routine, but instead of doing it against bots, you can do it against your friends, but we're going to use bots anyways, because I have no friends. <laughs> Let's go to offline or whatever. Same, same setup as the last tip. Um, but really if you're online, switch to bubble tag, set the score to 10. Uh, you can do more than 10 if you want it to be a bit longer. Um, set the maps to tournament 1v1, um, or you could do auto or whatever and just select the map yourself. Um, and yeah, same thing. I'm just going to set the uh, map select to uh, voting or whatever. Scarlet. Anyways, do a 1v1 bubble tag, pick a good map, and play the game. How bubble tag works is the first person who gets hit loses. If you get hit, you lose a point. Three, two, so in this game, one, it's really focusing on neutral. It's isolating the problem. Like there, I got too close to the Nash, so he beat me. There, I missed my Sarah, the Nash punished me, so he beat me. All right, let's see what's next. These bots aren't bad. He did a random down sig, so I beat him. So you can kind of see the problem being isolated. All right, I did a weapon toss that put Nash in a disadvantaged state where I thought the end light would hit, and it did. 
There I got too close diagonally because he got a spear, right? You can kind of see the issue. Oh, the Nash missed, so then I sared him. So this is a great way to simulate neutral in Rahala and to focus on being accurate. If you're accurate, you will win this game mode. And sometimes you can attack first, but your opponent needs to be standing still. So they're, you know, vulnerable. And that was a terrible Sarah punish from me, and that's why I got hit. Oh, let's see what this Nash does. I got too close to him. I didn't dash away. I should have had preemptive movement. And if you don't know what preemptive movement is, then go become a, uh, a Brahala student on TeamNutralix.com because we talk about a lot of that stuff. There's a lot of good information for just $4.99 in a live class environment. So I highly recommend go to TeamNutralix.com and become a Brahala student today. And sometimes when you up into us, it's still not confirmed. So let's beat this bot. It's a close game. It's first to 10. Okay, I can't lose. I cannot lose. Oh no. These bots aren't bad. <laughs> okay, that was terrible. They're bad. <laughs> first to two points wins. Nice. And you see, it's all about being accurate. You know, that bot missed, I got the accuracy, and he missed again. Good Terrible. Bye-bye. That's how you win in Brahala, and that's how you practice without playing ranked. And it's more fun because you can do that against, you know, friends online. So for tip number 14, we're going to go back to training, and we're going to pick your main, right? I'm picking Scarlet. And the tip is to practice your true combos 10 times in a row true. So it's a little game. Uh, this is a great warm-up routine if uh, you have issues practicing your uh, your combos. Like, if you can't hit the combos true 10 times out of 10 in a row, then definitely do this. Set the bot to the center of the map. Just makes it easy. Set the bot to reset. And then get ready. So we're going to practice some combos and make sure we can hit them 10 times in a row. So if I side light down there, that's one. The bot resets in position. And then I do it again. That's two. Right? This is three. Make sure you can do every true combo that's important 10 times in a row, frame perfect. Make sure you hit a true and everything, right? So I got no issues hitting this combo, but let's say side light recovery. Okay, that's one frame. One frame. So one frame is all you can do for side light recovery. So I'm hitting it perfect, right? That's three times in a row, four times in a row, five times in a row, nine times, and 10 times. So you can see why and how important this is training routine is i guarantee you everyone watching go try this lance side light recovery 10 times in a row at one dodge frame and if you do it on your first try i'll heart the comment and don't lie okay don't lie because it is really hard to hit that combo 10 times in a row at one frame it's very easy to do something like that but really do this with every single combo you have on your kit maybe it's hammered down light there so that's one then that's two you get what i'm trying to say Practice these combos, hit them 10 times in a row, and you'll you'll be good to go once you can do that. Next tip, number 15, watch a movement guide. We have some great movement guides here on Team Neutralix, so go check them out. I'm going to link them down below, but editor, show some on screen right now. There's a movement guide from earlier in 2024, as well as movement tips. Watch these videos and practice all the movement options, because honestly, you need to know what's said in this video. It is going to help you improve dramatically. Movement affects every single second of Brahala. So watch those videos and understand all the options in your, in your tool belt or kit or box or whatever. You have tools to do things and to win, and you need to know what the tools are in order to use them and win. So watch a movement guide to understand what the tools are, and then you can win using them. So go watch those. Link to that is also, again, down below or on the screen. You saw it. Go check out those videos. Now let's go to the next step. So now that you know what tools to use, we're going to actually practice using them. And to do that, uh, we're going to practice in matches. It's hard to practice while playing, you know? You're focused on winning. But here's how you do it. Any time where you're not focused on winning, practice your movement. So maybe I'm dash dancing right now. Or maybe I'm doing the dash landings right now. In a waiting room, I'm doing this, right? I'm just doing hand warmers, practicing my movement, practicing my movement. You know, I'm still messing up. I, I'm human, I'm human. But yeah, we're in an experimental game and you know, now we're focused on winning. You know, we're gonna do our thing. Maybe I'll play unarmed only for fun, I don't know. Do our thing and when nothing's happening, I'm practicing my movement a little bit. This is also experimental. Let's see. Well, I'll show you what I mean. When you're between stocks and everything like that, it's more opportunity to practice your movement. Okay, 
I didn't think that would hit, if I'm being honest. Just used to... <laughs> and now that we're between stocks, we're practicing our movement. You know, maybe dash dancing, whatever. Whenever you have the chance, practice it, you know? Get comfortable. You have time in between matches. Just to, you know, just continue building that muscle memory. Muscle memory is so important in the Brahala, and it, it takes time. So just stay consistent. You know, you don't need to play too much Brahala, but practice that movement. And please live. That's so sad. And I lived. That's crazy. <laughs> and now we're practicing our movement, you know, between between the match. Even though I'm screwing it up a lot. That's why you gotta practice. You know, I switched the D-pad. This is why you practice. Okay, I got no options. So I'm sweating. Okay. Go in. Oh. Okay. I thought that was gonna hit low key. Get it low key. Use a low Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Thanks to the boomerang jet. I'm gonna time this. Okay. That's coming down. Oh, that almost hit. That's funny. That almost hit. Oh no. What is this guy doing? So yeah, practice your movement between stocks whenever you can and just get those hand, war hand warmers ready. Now this is the 17th, the final and most important tip in this video. I promise if you're watching right now, comment down below, I was there. Okay, I'll, I'll know who you are. You were there for this tip. Tip number 17, do whatever it takes to win. It doesn't matter if you're playing passive it doesn't matter if you're running 24 seven or it doesn't matter if you're SIG spamming. At the end of the day, all that matters is if you've won or if you've lost. If you want to improve a Brahala, you will do whatever it takes to win, okay? Let that sink in. Don't let anyone tell you how you should or shouldn't play. If something works, follow it and understand it. I went pro by spamming Scarlet Lance down sig. That move had no recovery frames. I was not a good player, and I still don't think I'm a good player relative to some others. Mechanically, I'm not as good as the others, but game plan is different. Do whatever it takes to win. Anyone watching this video can go pro at Brawlhalla, I promise. No one's born different or anything like that. Video games are digital. They're not physical. There's not anything limiting you. I have one eye. Fun fact, my left eye is blind. Do whatever it takes to win because you can create solutions to become better than Sandstorm. Yes, it's a far goal, but anyone watching can do it. And if you don't believe you can do it, then you've already lost. So do whatever it takes to win and go pro if that's what you really want. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys all later. Take care. Peace.